Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. I have here today, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, a Romacraft Cro-Magnon with a Candela wrapper. Beautiful looking cigar. Can't wait to, uh, to light this up. I said before how I enjoy the uh, the Candelas in the in the spring and summer, and granted, it's a little premature to call this spring, but we're back into the fifties today, and we're hopeful. So let's uh, let's cut this. So, it is St. Patrick's Day, and I apologize I'm not wearing green. I do have a fair amount of Irish blood in me. My grandmother, who was actually was actually more German than Irish, but she identified with her father, who was, who was Irish, uh, at least part Irish, and was fiercely proud of it. And she would be so disappointed to see me not wearing something green today, but... This is the way life is. Now I just need to find a lighter. So today, what I decided to do is, I'm going to do a, a VR for my friend Kilted Piper Steve. And, and Miss Kathy. So the, their channel is doing really well. They're up to 300 subs now. And they wanted to do a little uh, contest giveaway sort of thing. And the prize for the winner is a beautiful pipe roll that Miss Kathy made. It's, it's just gorgeous. I'll, I'll link to the video down below so you can see it. And there's a pipe included. There's... Uh, I don't know all what's included. Go go see the video. But but the pipe roll is is you know just fantastic and you know really high quality. Uh, th these things are to get these well made. They're very expensive. So uh, what Miss Kathy did is is amazing, and you, you got to check out that video. Now Steve and Kathy, I I, I please do not include me in the raffle. I've got. I shouldn't call it a raffle. You know what I mean. Don't 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 put my name in the hat before you draw. I've got more pipes, more tobacco, more of everything that I know what to do with. I do have a pipe roll. I've got pouches. I'm I'm, I'm set, and I'd rather somebody uh, that isn't as set have a chance to to build their collection and add some accessories. So. I wanted to do this primarily because I thought it was a really interesting topic and because I want to help out you guys and help build your channel. So folks, if you're not subscribed to Kilted Piper Steve, get over there and subscribe. There'll be a link down below. So this is a good cigar. This is a very good cigar. So the topic of Steve and Kathy's um, uh, contest, the, 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 the VR request, was to talk about someone that inspires you or has inspired you. And I've thought about this a bit, and you know, I've thought about it in the past as well. And I, I could list, you know, everybody could list a lot of people. And, you know, of course my dad's going to be on that list. You know, of course my grandfather's going to be on that list. Um, and and they've inspired me in, in different ways. You know, I've learned different things from them. And they them and, and a whole list of teachers and, and co-workers and, and friends are going to be on that list. And they've all inspired me in different ways, uh, all to make me a better a better man. And, you know, I appreciate all of that. But as I thought about it, you know, what I do here on YouTube is a lot of, um, you know, pipe repair, that sort of stuff. And I talk about pipe uh, 
airway geometry and, and the physics of pipe smoking and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I thought, you know, I should probably think about that a bit. And I, I made a video last week, I think, about craftsmanship. And that was, that's been on my mind and all. And I thought about a teacher who really, really had a, a very significant effect on my life and who definitely inspired me to aspire towards craftsmanship. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm a craftsman. <laughs> There's been some back and forth about that with some folks. Uh, I appreciate the compliments, but I just personally don't think I'm a craftsman. Uh, but I do... I do try to, to move in that direction. And this, this person who I'm going to tell you about was a huge influence in, in that area. So, and in other areas of my life as well. So his name, now I can tell you his name because he, he sadly passed away a few years back. Um, his name was David Hale. And David was a professor in the theater department at Temple University. He taught at Temple for over 30 years, um, was very accomplished. Now, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I, I'm a scientist. I, my degree from Temple University was in biological sciences with a minor in psychology. Uh, I took a year off because I kind of went nuts <laughs> when I first started. I, you know, I got through a year and I just... I, for some reason, decided I wanted to be a theater major, and there I was, being a theater major. I got better. I got better largely because of David Hale. So David was in the theater department. He was a teacher, a former chairman. He, uh, he was very accomplished. He, his background was uh, actually in philosophy, but he also had become a, a stage manager, somebody that could um, design sets. Design. He was involved with a company that did uh, theatrical flying. So he would, he would do these world tours with the Peter Pan touring company. Uh, if you watch David Letterman back in the early days when David Letterman would, anytime there was a, you know, somebody flying on David Letterman, and it happened quite frequently, uh, that was David Hale doing that. He he would suit the person up, make sure the harness was correct, run the wires and everything, and then control it during the, the show. So you know the guy the guy knew what he was doing in that realm, <clears throat> and the class that I took from him was called stage management. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to do, I wanted to do like set design and building of sets, creating illusions uh, for, for the theater. I, I just was really fascinated with that. I did some of it when I was in high school, and I thought it would be a lot of fun. And I, you know, I had this interest in psychology and sort of tricking the brain into thinking there's depth in something that's flat and you know those kind of things. So that's what drew me to it. And I liked working with my hands. So I took this course. I, I'd taken other theater courses at, at, up to this point. And yeah, I did very well in them because they're they're easy. <laughs> I mean, compared to compared to taking physics and organic chemistry, you got to work at a theater course, but you don't have to work as hard. I'm sorry if I'm offending any theater majors out there, but that's just true. And I was an A student, so I, you know I was getting A's in all these classes. And I took this class on st in stage management, and this was one of the most difficult classes that I've ever taken. This guy tortured me. So I used to hang around the, the set design department, the, the set building department. You know, it was, it was this huge workshop, and it had every tool you would want. And I used to just, just for fun, help them build sets. And, you know, I learned... Uh, I already knew some woodworking, but I, I learned a lot of woodworking there. I learned how to weld. I, I, I learned all sorts of stuff, things about materials and how materials interact with one another, some machining. You know, you wouldn't think all this stuff goes on in a theater, but it does. Um, behind the scenes, obviously. And I loved that kind of stuff. And I just would have spent, you know, honestly, I just would have 
stayed there. You know, I, I didn't care about graduating. I didn't care about my future career. I just wanted to do that. And I was taking the classes more as a way to have an excuse to do that stuff. And honestly, I was pretty good at it, you know, which is part of the reason I like doing it. So this class that David taught was supposed to be about how to be a stage manager, you know, the person that sort of keeps everything in order during a production. But as a part of this, we had to spend a significant amount of time in that workshop making things. Um, and doing all sorts of other things, you know, we had we had to manage, uh, co-manage a production. So there would be a actual stage manager that was a graduate student, and we would get paired with them, and we would have to go and do all the things that they would do. Um, but there was a lot of set building, set design, um, being able to do three dimensional projection drawings and drafting and those sorts of things. Uh, it was, it was actually a very complicated course because there was all these different parts to it. And one of the things that, that we had to do was we had to do a lot of this, this workshop stuff. And he would come into the workshop while I was there and he would say, you know, you see that box of cutoffs over there? You know, little pieces of two by four. I'd say, take, take those to the radial arm saw and cut them in half. Okay. So I go and I walk over and I pick up some of them and I take out the tape measure and then he comes over and he says, no, don't use a tape measure. So I, you know, line it up as best I can, eyeball it, and cut it in half. And it comes, you know, it's like within a millimeter and, and I, I show it to him. He says, no, it's not good enough. I want you to cut it in half. I probably cut 20 boards in half. He wasn't satisfied with any of them, you know, he just said, you're, you're no good at this. Um, his assignments that we had to do, one I remember was we had to go into the workshop and pick up a piece of scrap wood. And we had to pick up the piece of wood before he told us what we were going to do with it. So I'm, I'm holding this piece of pine, because most of what we used was construction grade lumber. And then the assignment came, which was uh, sand it. Sand it and shellac it. And do it perfectly. So, and it's due in a week. So we all set the sanding the stuff and I actually took it home and, you know, sand it and, you know, start at 220 and work my way up the grits and, and, you know, get it perfectly smooth and then put the shellac on it and everything. And, and shellacking is, is a, an art in and of itself. And, you know, I learned French polish and all that. And then we, you know, submit this for a grade. And he just, he would, you know, it was, a, it was a perfectly smooth piece of pine with, with a coat of shellac on it. And he just would find defects in this and there's a scratch here and everything, you know, that's a C minus. And he just beat me, you know, he, he, he hounded me. Nothing I did was good enough for him. So we're walking, uh, the, the, the scene shop was in the, at the lower level and his classroom was up at the, uh, like the fourth floor of the building. So we would sometimes leave together from the scene shop to go up and we'd walk up this stairway and at each landing of the stairway, it's going to be hard to explain, but there was, there was like a wall of windows as, as you come up the steps and you make the turn, there was this wall of window. And at one point there was a part of the building that extended out beyond that so there was a there was a rooftop that you would see and the, there were workmen repairing the window and we would make this walk probably three times a week like monday wednesday friday and you know so we walked by a couple times and the window was out and the workmen were doing stuff and then we walked by and the job was done and as we walked by he stopped at the window and he's looking out and on the rooftop they had left uh, like an empty tube of caulk and a coil of something or the other and you know which was a shame but it's a rooftop um, and the caulking around the window was very not good and he just stared at this and I'm standing it's kind of awkward because I don't know if I'm supposed to go ahead or wait or what and he just like let out this deep sigh and he, he shook his head and he said he looked at me and shook his head and said craftsmanship is dead and then he walked up the steps. 
And that kind of resonated with me. He introduced me to Robert Persig and the book Then in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And I've talked about this in the past. A very influential book in my life. Uh, and if you haven't read it, I highly recommend you read it. Um, it's not about Zen and it's not really about motorcycles, <laughs> but it's a fantastic book. It gets into the issue of quality. And he introduced me to that book. And to the philosophy of Persig, which is a, a interesting branch of philosophy that, I, that I'm quite interested in, uh, especially as it pertains to quality and values. So, where's this all going? So remember, I'm a, I'm a biology major, biochemistry major at the time, on a full tuition scholarship that's decided to go and become a scene shop worker. And I'm getting straight A's in all of my classes, except this guy is beating me up and telling me nothing I do is good enough and giving me a C on everything. Final project is due. For the final project, I'll, I remember very clearly how he described it. He told us we had to make a toy. That's the only instruction we had. So I thought, okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to make a chessboard. And I went to the lumber yard and I got mahogany and white maple. And I made this beautiful, beautiful chessboard, uh, you know, butcher block style. And I, I, I oriented it, well, not butcher block style because it wasn't end grain, but, um, you know, cut out each, each square on the chessboard was a, different square of material, uh, different square of wood, and I glued those all together. I put banding around the outside of it, uh, really a nice quality piece, and you know, sanded it perfectly, French polished it. It was, it was gorgeous. You know, the people that worked in that shop, that was their job, you know, not, not students, but people that just worked in that shop professionally were telling me that, you know, they, they'd offer to buy it. And, you know, it was it, every person in the class was telling me how good it was and that they didn't have a chance and all that. And the, the final exam was you'd, you'd present this thing to him and he'd critique it in front of the group. And he looked at it and he said something like, you know, very nice, you, 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 did, a, you did a good job with this. Where are the pieces? <laughs> I said, I don't, I don't have pieces. He said, well, you can't play chess without pieces. A B. <laughs> now, for me, that was, a, that was an improvement, right? Because <laughs> I was getting Cs. So next semester, I'm a masochist. And, you know, I loved the guy. I loved that he was challenging me. I loved that he was uh, pushing me to be a better person. So next semester, I enrolled again in theater classes, and I chose him as my advisor. And I had my first meeting with him. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be, okay, what classes are you taking? What classes are you going to take? You know, that kind of stuff. We never talked about classes. I sat down across from him in his office, and he sat down and he said to me, Mike, what are you doing? And I said, I'm here for my appointment. He said, no, what, what are you doing? Why are you here? And I, you know, talked a little bit about it, and he said, you're not any good at this. You got abilities. You, you're, you're smart. You can do other things. But this isn't where you should be. I don't know what it was that he saw. I really don't, because I, I wasn't bad. You know, I wasn't failing the class in a dramatic fashion or anything. I just wasn't meeting his very high standards. And looking back on it, I think he set those standards higher for me because he saw something in me that made him believe that I would not be happy if I had continued down that path. So, you know, I, I made some arguments and stuff like that. And he said, okay, fine. And he signed off on my, my classes for the year. 
and I had to walk over to the bursar's office and I had like a couple of books with me and stuff and I I go out and it was raining and I'm walking down the street and I'm you know I'm I'm gonna show him you know this is this guy doesn't know what he's talking about I'm gonna show him and I went a few about a hundred yards or so and I dropped the books in a puddle and I looked down at these books and sort of floating on the top was this you know theater book and something snapped those words what are you doing came back to me and I picked the books up and I shook the water off of them and I went to the bursar's office and I withdrew from all of my classes and basically said I'm not going to be here for a semester I'm not taking any classes this semester I applied for a job and got the job um, as a kitchen installer for a company that's no longer here but it was called Priceless Kitchen and got to work with a master carpenter who taught me a lot more about woodworking and carpentry and I spent a year doing that I just I needed that time to kind of sort through things and, and just to use my hands and work all day and to be tired and when I got home and and at the end of the year, I re-enrolled as a biology major, and uh, you know, here I am. I've got a great career. I've you know, wonderful job, and I have the ability to come down here into this shop and and use my hands and do all the things that I thought I wanted to do professionally, but now realize I wouldn't be happy doing those because I'm happiest when I'm working with people and solving problems and, and things like that. And that's where the science stuff comes in. So David Hale saw that. I don't know how, I don't know what it was. And he, he gave me the gift of beating me up and telling me that I wasn't good enough. And I will be forever grateful to that man for that. Uh, he also introduced me to some very interesting areas of philosophy that have helped shape me as a as a human being uh, far beyond what I do here in the shop. So yeah, he was a big influence in my life, and uh, you know, not the typical choice I know, but but somebody that was very important to me. Only knew him for a year, you know, so I was only there for one semester and then a little tiny bit of the other, so I didn't even really know him for a year, but. Uh, yeah, he had a huge influence on me. So thank you, David, wherever you are. <laughs> thank you, Steve and Kathy, for a really great idea for, uh, for a, um, a giveaway. And congratulations on your 300 subs. Again, please don't enter me. Uh, but guys, please check out Steve and Kathy's channel. The link will be down below. And enter the giveaway. It's a, it's a great opportunity. It's a beautiful prize. So go watch the video that I linked to and sub them while you're looking at it. All right, folks, that's about it. Uh, we've got Takio Kimura uh, this Friday night. Uh, really looking forward to getting to know Takio better. As soon as I finish this video, I'm going to be calling him up to, uh, you know, just chat for a little bit and uh, say hello and get the logistics worked out. But I always enjoy that first meeting with someone. I know Takio through his comments, but this is the first time we'll be chatting. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. So please join us Friday, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern and uh, we'll have a big old time. All right, folks, I'm going to enjoy this cigar and uh, have a hopefully relaxing Wednesday evening. Y'all take care. Bye now.